In the realm of Japanese horror, no one is more well known than Junji Ito. He has garnered a sizable fan base since his debut in the late 1980s. Junji Ito has his own set of tricks and tropes that he enjoys using. Aside from the obvious ones like body horror, grossness, and unfathomable supernatural power, Itio employs a variety of additional ways to communicate his idea of terror. Some are subtle, while others are more obvious. The audience is kept on edge by a combination of body horror, scary surroundings, and an overall sense of unease. He truly is a master of horror, and over the years, some of his most significant works have also been made into live action films or dramas. Most recently, his works have been adapted for the Netflix horror anthology, Junji Ito, Maniac Japanese Tales of the Macabre. The show has already garnered rave reviews and today we bring to you the story of the hanging balloons. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. <coughs> the Unnerving Plot The third episode of Junji Ito Maniac tells the story of the hanging balloons. The story is told via flashbacks, as our protagonist, Kazuko, sits in the corner of her room, traumatised and alone, while a female voice calls out to her repeatedly, coaxing her to come out of her room. The ominous aura created in this episode is palatable throughout, and the story really sucks the viewer into a grief-stricken world. The main plot of The Hanging Balloons revolves around the suicide of Teruyumi Fujino, a teenage idol from Japan, and the ripple effect it has on teen suicides nationwide. This phenomenon itself is not uncommon in Japan. In fact, it is generally known that surges in suicide frequently occur within a 10-day period after the deaths of famous people in the country. At the very beginning of the episode, Terumi's body is found hanging outside of her window with a noose around her neck and the rope tied to the building's power line. The imagery itself is terribly uncomfortable and graphic and it is understandable that people were shocked by the situation as they crowded the building hoping to catch a glimpse of the tragic situation. Terumi's passing is subsequently portrayed as a shock to the country and her mental state is sensationalised. It is also speculated that Terumi was under pressure to perform and was unsure of her future as an idol singer. Every news channel is rife with news of her death and speculation surrounding the cause of her suicide. The fact that a suicide note is never found adds to all the suspicion and increased debate around her death. Kazuko and their three other friends are also deeply impacted by Terumi's death. They are all best friends, so Terumi's passing is terribly traumatic for them. The school that the girls go to also holds a memorial service for the deceased teen idol in an effort to bring the community together. What is definitely surprising here is that the concept of mental health is never adequately addressed, which further isolates young Kazuko as she deals with the death of her best friend. However, the memorial service is not the end of things. Soon, rumours about Terumi's ghost haunting the city start to spread as sightings of Terumi are reported from all across the city. Many psychologists and other scholars and professionals theorise that the sightings were simply a result of mass hysteria and a collective hallucination born out of shock instead of it being something to do with the paranormal. However, all the sightings eerily have the same description. The people see her enormous ghostly head floating across the sky as if it is in a trance. On its own, this is already a terrible thought. Imagine seeing a huge balloon resembling a severed human head just ominously floating in the sky. But it eventually becomes clear that the enormous head is actually a balloon shaped like a human head, from which a noose hangs. With this additional information, the situation just grows more terrifying. Further, Kazuko is not the only one personally impacted by Terumi's death. We are also shown how her ex-boyfriend, Shiraishi, is deeply affected. Not only is he grieving the loss of the woman he loved, but he's also been heckled and bullied by Terumi's fans who blame him for her demise. Shiraishi was not fully supportive of Terumi's idol life and career, and thus had voiced his concerns, and that fact is being held against him by his fans. For a while in the episode, Shiraishi and Kazuko bond over their shared grief. However, Shiraishi one day admits to Kazuko that he has also seen Terumi's ghostly head floating in the sky. At first, Kazuko refuses to believe him and thinks that he is still reeling from the death, and this is his attempt 
at trying to get closure. But Shiraishi promises to call her the next time he sees the floating head. A little while after, at night, she gets a call from Shiraishi, who tells her that he has seen the head and that she needs to rush to him if she wants to see it for herself. She makes her way to the location and lo and behold, she sees Terumi's disembodied head, enlarged and just floating through the air. As she stares at the apparition in disbelief, Shiraishi is hypnotically drawn into climbing a tree by the ghostly head as he desperately tries to apologize to Terumi. However, as he does this, a noose comes down from the sky, seemingly from nowhere, and he hangs himself there using the rope. His head separates from his body and expands to the size of a huge balloon similar to Terumi's, after which it flies into the sky and starts kissing her. In what is a disturbing scene to say the least, the two floating heads kiss as Kazuko screams before running away, trying to make sense of what she has just seen. Kazuko goes back to school and confides in her three friends about what she saw, but they refuse to believe her. However, even if they did believe her, they are completely unprepared for what is about to happen next. The floating heads of the four girls descend upon them from the sky and begin to chase them, presumably in an effort to hang them as well. The girls try to make a run for it, but only Kazuko escapes with her life still intact. The rest of her friends die and are hoisted into the sky by their respective face balloons. Thus, the floating heads literally work like killing devices where the victim is caught in the balloon's noose, hanged to death, and then left to float around with its limp body dangling below. Tsurumi is actually the first victim of the hanging balloons, but it appeared like she had committed suicide because the rope attached to her hanging balloon had broken off on the power line outside her house. Soon, people all over the city, and presumably all over Japan, begin being pursued by their own floating heads as they attempt to lure them to their deaths. People are shown running and hiding from their own enormous, deformed faces, only to be eventually drawn to their deaths by them, creating a terrifying image and environment with everyone living in fear. After a while, these enormous heads with hung corpses hanging beneath them begin to invade the sky over Japan. We see one of the most disturbing sights in the whole episode, the image of the entire sky filled with face balloons with limp corpses dangling from them. The problem is further worsened by the fact that any attempt to pop the balloons, for example, by burning them, damages the victim's matching, still attached head. In effect, harming the balloon will also lead to the person's death. Everyone in Tokyo have by this point seen the deadly balloons. News channels instruct everyone to stay indoors and use cars while traveling, since going out without any protection means certain death. Kazuko's family has managed to survive thus far, but even they will not be able to escape the hanging balloons. Kazuko's father decides that he cannot sit at home, so he tries to get to work. However, his balloon catches him as he tries to run to his car and kills him. Next, Yosuke, her brother, leaves the house to obtain food for the family, deciding to use an umbrella as protection. However, that is simply not enough to protect him against the ominous hanging balloons and he too dies. Kazuko's mother, driven by grief, opens the front door and walks outside, seemingly surrendering herself to the balloons. Immediately, her balloon sends down the noose and she dies as well. Inside the house, a traumatized Kazuko is stranded all by herself. As the story goes on, we find out that Kazuko is starving to death and hiding in her room after her entire family has been captured by the balloons. A noose tantalizingly dangles in front of Kazuko as the show comes to a close with her being deceived into opening the window as she finally gives in to the voice that has been speaking to her and coaxing her. It can be assumed that finally Kazuko also has given in to the tyranny of the balloons and dies in the end. The story is definitely left open-ended, but we are here to answer all the burning questions. The original story. As we already know, the stories that are shown in the new Netflix series are not original scripts. They are adaptations of Ito's work. Hence, Hanging Balloon is taken from a Junji Ito story called The Hanging Balloons. The Face Burglar, volume four of the Horror World of Junji Ito collection, contains the sixth chapter, The Hanging Balloons. Every living individual in the story has a dangling balloon that is a distorted reflection of their own face. These balloons are linked to lengthy ropes 
that are used to track down and murder the person they resemble. If a human by chance, even if it is in self-defense, kills one of the flying balloons, they die horrifyingly and hideously. It is said that Ito took inspiration for the hanging balloons from a childhood dream and the dangerous creatures from the title story are made up of severed heads that float around like balloons and terrorize their real life counterparts. In the story, Terumi Fujino commits suicide by hanging herself with a noose from a telephone wire. It is after this incident that huge flying balloon heads begin appearing all over Tokyo. However, However, they are not harmless and instead are constantly trying to trick people into hanging themselves or killing them. Terumi's best friend Kazuko finds herself in a fix as people all around her begin getting killed and taken away by these hanging balloon heads. Soon everyone is caught by the balloons and their bodies hang in the sky, including Kazuko's mother who had gone to look for Kazuko's brother Yosuke. Kazuko is left imprisoned inside the house all by herself but at the end of the story it is implied that she has also been killed by the hanging balloon that has her face. This one is quite horrifying and the imagery will give you chills. Often, nothing is scarier than an innocent thing like a balloon being mutated into a floating, killing machine. As far as a comparison with the show's adaptation is concerned, the show likely played up the homicidal tendencies of the balloons. Instead of trying to trick the people into committing suicide, like in the original story, the balloons shown in the series were actively trying to kill their corresponding people by hunting them down, pursuing them and actively wrapping the noose around their necks. This obviously made the show's portrayal far scarier. All in all, the visual adaptation stayed true to the original story and did a brilliant job of creating the unnerving atmosphere that Junji Ito is best known for. What are the hanging balloons? The hanging balloons are definitely a sight to behold, just not in a good way. They are gigantic floating heads, deformed and lifeless, with a noose at the end of the rope attached to them. In the show, they seem to take on a manic expression as they come close to killing the person whose face they possess, which makes them super scary, since it confirms that they are not a neutral phenomenon, but in actuality, a malevolent one. However, digging deeper into the meaning behind one of Ito's most well-known stories, one can understand that the hanging balloons are not a reflection of the paranormal, they are instead the representation of grief and the general want to commit suicide. The balloons represent everyone's underlying desire to commit suicide. They are the result of widespread hallucinations that are ignited by the passing of the cherished teen idol and then exasperated by network effects. They are not tangible balloons. In general, one's likelihood of committing suicide increases with the number of people one knows who have done so themselves. And throughout the narrative, the balloons embody the character's shared struggle with suicidal thoughts as well as the death spectre that comes with suicide for those closest to the victims. Terumi's death is a critical mass point for the Japanese society and it sparks a wave of grief that exasperates the existing turmoil with regard to mental health in Japanese society. Kazuko is the last to perish when the head balloons begin claiming the lives of numerous people all around Japan one by one. It's consistent with Japanese suicide patterns that Kazuko chooses to isolate herself within her home before her balloon gets her. The fact that the victim are hung from balloons that mimic their severed heads is also a remark on how people who are thinking about suicide typically don't exhibit their suicidal tendencies until it is too late. Thus, while the story is definitely horrifying and Ito's representation of the hanging balloon heads is enough to send a chill up your spine, the deeper meaning is even more chilling and somber. The show in general does a wonderful job of adapting Ito's work and this episode stands out because of its creepy visuals and tense storyline. It is also the only story to be adapted on screen for this series in its entirety. If you're a fan of mind-bending horror, definitely check out Junji Ito's Maniac Japanese Tales of the Macabre, which is now available for viewing on Netflix. Do you like Ito's style of horror? Tell us in the comments section below.